Hey, y'all, welcome back to the Late Night Vision Show. We've got another great episode with you. My name is Jason. I'm the owner of Outdoor Legacy, and I've got my co-host, uh, who's always sitting here uh, beside me. Uh, well, not beside me. He's beside me <laughs> on the, the screen. We're beside he's each other. Not raised two, two hours away, but yeah. the uh, uh, through the magic of technology, <laughs> we've got Mr. Hans East Texas yeah. from the Hans East Texas YouTube channel. What's going on tonight? If you are looking at all these AGM models, wondering which one you should get, which one's best for you, you have landed on the right show. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> it is confusing because AGM has so, you and I talk about it all, all the time, AGM has so many products and uh, you know they it's hard to keep them all straight. And they have several uh, products that cross over into, I guess, each other's uh, market, whether that be price or, or uh um, specs. So yeah, we're going to sort it all out today. But before we get into it, if you're interested in any night vision or thermal optic, give us a call 877-350-1818. Uh, you can call and we can sort all this out over the phone if you're interested in purchasing something. If you know what you want and you say, I'd rather just order and not talk to these fools, uh, hop on the website, outdoorlegacygear.com. You can find all the optics there. Everything we talk about, there's even stuff on there that we haven't talked about yet that we will be getting to soon, I promise. Uh, but man, we've got a lot to get uh, to do here, Jason, of sorting this stuff out. We kind of just got to jump right into it, you know? All right, guys. So listen, I want to say something up front. Um, for all the people that complain about Hans and I making too much small talk before we start the show, I mean, Hans went directly from his introduction to talking about the show. So there is no... No small talk this week. All right, guys, let's just do it. We do have a lot of models. We're going to get into this. And uh, uh, the point of this show, as Han said, is really going to be to uh, explain and, and hopefully uh, take some of the confusion out of the AGM uh, thermal rifle scopes because they do have now three different model lines. Mm -hmm. So there's... Uh, I mean, models. Is that what you'd call them, Hans? Models? Yeah. Is it three different models? Yeah. 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 Okay. There's models within models, though, so I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so uh, I, I want to quickly go over these, and here's where we're going to do this. I'm going to just quickly kind of give you a rundown, and then Hans is going to go over the uh, four models within <laughs> yeah. each model category. Yeah. We're talking about and, and 12. Quickly yeah, we're you, talking about yeah. 12 scopes today. There's four, four models within each model. <laughs> we're confusing each other. But the ratter, Rattlers, the Varmints, and the Adders are the ones we're talking about. And there's four models in each one of those models. So a lot. That's right. So it's a lot. So we're going to go over. We're going to try to make this. Uh, we're going to try to make it simple. I will tell you this. When Han starts reading these models off, um, it, it may be like, okay, uh, this is getting to be too much. You don't have to try to take notes or anything on that. That's okay. Again, you could always go over to our website at OutdoorLegacyGear.com, and you could just type in Varmint, and you'll see the four models. You could type in Rattler. You'll see the four models. Adder, same thing. So that that might just you know make it you know, a little less confusing. And probably the people that are interested in the 384 uh, resolution model, you're not going to probably be interested in the 640 or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So you could probably rule that out as well, just based on the, you know, the price point here. Right. So, all right, I'm going to give a quick rundown. AGM, you know, when they jumped into this market, uh, they brought in the Rattler. All right. The Rattler is their, what I call their flagship model line. Uh, extremely popular, small, lightweight, compact, uh, that is a fantastic scope. Next, they came on with the Varmint. The Varmint is a similar size, a little bit bigger, because right here on the top, it has a laser rangefinder, and that is really uh, the big thing that's going to set it apart from these other optics. If you don't need a laser rangefinder, you know, that might not be the optic for you. We'll get into some of that. And then their latest, and it's going to be hard for me to get this on the screen with my microphone, is the Adder. So this is their scope line. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that looks like a traditional daytime rifle scope on a 30 millimeter tube. So again, I will be showing these again in just a minute as Hans gets through with these. I want to say up front, we always kind of forget about this. We talk about warranties and things. AGM has a three-year warranty mm-hmm. bumper to bumper on all of these optics. Uh, AGM has a very good customer service, mm-hmm. very good warranty support. Uh, they will take care of you. So, you know, people always ask well, about this company or that company. How's the customer service? How's the warranty? Mm-hmm. So we wanted to get that out of the way because we were bad about forgetting <laughs> to, to talk about the warranty. So right. that's that. Hans, Yeah. unless I forgot something, jump into this thing. No, no, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, the Rattlers were the first one of these threes that were released. And like Jason talked about, probably... Uh, one of the popular, most popular, uh, one of their models that they've uh, come out with. So the Rattlers, like we talked about, there's four different models and I've got a huge list of stuff going on here. Thank you, Jason, for getting this together <laughs> for late last night, because there's a lot here. Very so awesome. the Rattlers, there's four different models. There's the TS25384, the Rattler TS35384, and then you got the 640 resolution models, the TS35640 and the TS5640. When you see the TS35, the 35 is just the size, the diameter of the objective lens. That's what that means. It's it's not in reference to anything else. It's just the size of the objective lens. Now, the 384 Rattlers, the TS25 and the TS35, those are 384 by 288, 288 thermal core resolution, 17 micron. Uh, the TS25 uh, is a 1.5 base magnification. The TS35 is a 2.2 power base magnification. So really the, the only difference there is just the size of the objective lens and the base magnification. On the 640 resolution models, those are uh, 640 by 512 uh, resolution and they are 12 microns. So again, lower the micron number, the better the picture image. The TS35, that's generally speaking, generally, but not <laughs> resolution is more important than micron. Yes. Uh, measurement. Right. We that's had, right. we did a whole show on that a while back, but yeah. so T the TS35 640, that is a two power base magnification unit. Uh, you know, uh, and I didn't even tell the price that let me back up the TS25 384 that is 1995 the TS 35 384 that's 2495 so both of those uh, in that you know 2000 to 2500 dollar price range the TS 35 640 um, the price on it now is 3495 now if you remember we talked about this a while back uh, that price was lowered down from 3995 so it's now 3495 was 3995 AGM lowered the price on those uh, the TS 50 640 that is a two and a half power base magnification unit for thirty nine ninety nine. It was formerly forty four ninety five. So both of those six forty resolution scopes are under the four thousand dollar mark, which is uh, a great thing to see, and it is now uh, starting to become the trend <laughs> with a lot of manufacturers out there. Now, uh, both of these scopes uh, again do come with an American Defense Manufacturing mount. Uh, they have video recording. They do not record audio. Uh, they both have Wi-Fi and they run on CR123 batteries, which you're going to get about, uh, say about two and a half to three hours of runtime on a, uh, a set of lithium recharge, uh, lithium CR123 batteries. You can also run it off a rechargeable battery pack that, uh, you can use the cord that's provided to, to do that. Uh, Jason, I'm sure you've been okay. showing the stuff or you're about I, to. <laughs> I, I'm about to. Okay. So I want to say this. I, I, Hans is reading my notes. So he, he was kind of fumbling there through my notes. I, it's it's my fault. What I should have told him was I wrote these for Joe Biden's teleprompter. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'll, if you'll just read them down through there, it, it might work. I don't know. Yeah. I, I put them in kind of a weird list. And again, I, I, I know you, you're, you've got a little more uh, wherewithal than Joe Biden. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I can tell that these notes are written, how it pops up in your head, which is not always <laughs> about like Joe Biden's <laughs> it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You, you mean, you mean rattler, uh, TS 25. Is it pudding day rattler yeah, TS 35 exactly. or is it jello? Exactly. All right, here we go. So this is the unit. I'm going to show this here. Um, Again, I've already held it up. Now, look, I'm going to this. Oh, actually, you know what? This is fantastic. This unit right here, this Rattler. And guys, I know you're getting me on here and all this. hard to see. 
This has the 2QD throw lever mount on it. So this causes so much confusion. Um, sometimes these units ship with a 2 throw lever mount. Sometimes they ship with a 1. I think the standard is a 1. But sometimes AGM will run out of these and they have extras of these 2s, so they'll stick them on there. So it's like rather than, you know, n not ship any scopes, hey, we got these, we'll just put these mounts on here. So sometimes a guy might get one and he goes, wait a minute, my buddy has got two throw levers, mine only has one, or vice versa. And everybody always wants what they don't get. And here is the truth of the matter. There is no difference. We have had, uh, you know, Tom Stewart from American Defense Manufacturing on this show. He has confirmed with us that there is no benefit to having, I wish I could hold it. Yeah, there, right there. If you got a mount like that, it only has one mount. Mm -hmm. If it's an American Defense mount, I can't speak to every other brand, but for the American Defense, their tests completely show there is no benefit to having this secondary mount. It doesn't hurt anything either. Not at all. So if you end up with a Rattler and it's got one or two throw levers, it's just a design. That's mm -hmm. all that it is. It doesn't, don't, don't fret over it. It's not going to hurt anything at all. So this is just, this is a good example. This one I pulled out of the box, just happens to have a two, uh, two lever mount on it. Mm -hmm. All right. So moving along, I just want to quick, quickly show, you can see how small this is. You can see that I can, I can basically palm this thing. If this mount wasn't on here, I could do it right over here. This is where your two CR123A batteries go in. Uh, this is what I really like. I'm holding this up here so you can see. This is the, uh, in my opinion, probably the most simple layout and design for buttons on a thermal optic. Uh, we have a power button that is separate, and we have an up, you know, well, a, a center select, up, down, left, right. And so that's just like a remote control. I mean, just on your TV, remote, whatever. Super, super simple, super easy. Um, that's basically it. I mean, that's the, the general walk around. Uh, I mean, if you want a more detailed review of, of this optic, you know, obviously we have got that on this show uh, in past episodes as well uh, as Hans does on his Hans ETX YouTube channel. You mm -hmm. can find those as well. But that's basically it. Yeah. And it will come with this American Defense mount, either the one or the two QD throw lever, normally the one. Uh, it will come with it pre attached. So you take this scope out of the box, put you some batteries in there, and you are good to go. That's right. So let's talk about the Varmint. This is the only thermal scope in AGM's line that has a uh, integrated built-in laser rangefinder. So, uh, it, you know, this show being produced in, what, August 2022, it might change uh, later on down the road, but right now the Varmint is the only one. So there are four different models of the Varmints. You, and they, uh, again, two 384 models, two 640 models. So starting with the 384s, um, they are the, the TS35 384 and the TS50 384. Both of these are 384 resolution uh, by 288 with 12 micron um, uh, processor on it. So the TS35, that's a three power base magnification. The price on it's 3295. Uh, then you got the TS50, which is a four power base magnification. The price on that is $37.95. Uh, the two 640 resolution models, and those are 640 by 512 uh, with a 12 micron processor. Uh, that is a, the TS35 640, which is a two power. <laughs> price on that is $49.95. And the TS50 640, which is a two and a half power. Price on that is $5,000. $495 again. All four of these units include the laser range finder, which is integrated, built into the scope. Uh, also, it comes with the American Defense Manufacturing quick release mount, uh, video recording, Wi Fi, and it runs on one 18650 battery, which you're going to get about three to three and a half hours of runtime on, which is great because those batteries are inexpensive and you can find them anywhere, have a whole pocket full of them. Uh, and it's uh, we are a big fan of that. But those are the four different uh, Varmint models, two 384 resolution models to choose from, two 640 resolution models to choose from, all at different base magnification levels. 
Okay. I'm going to throw this thing up here and show it real quick. Uh, I know we've got we've still got to go all the way to the, the adders. We've got more to do and a lot to talk about. So I'm going to do this quickly. Um, this is the unit. Here's that single, that single QD throw lever uh, mount you can see here. Sa same mount, just just a little shorter. Mm -hmm. Doesn't doesn't change anything. All right. Um, so one thing I need to point out that people ask us about from time to time. And uh, I understand it is important to left-handed people, but all these buttons are going to be on the left. So that is the wrong side for a left-handed shooter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if you're left-handed, I mean, again, I hate to just put all left-handed people into one group because I know some guys, you know, are left-handed, but they shoot right-handed. But, but if, if that's a problem, it's just something to be aware of because I, I had a guy said, hey, you know, uh, you didn't mention that on there, and I, I kind of figured it out. But so notice that um, I, I do think the controls are easy. Uh, you know, there's a scroll wheel over here. Um, I tell you, Hans and I are, are kind of pretty big fans of these scroll wheels. They're they're, they're easy. You know, you got a button press, so I, I like that. You can see the small laser rangefinder here on the top. It is not big as laser rangefinders go. Uh, this is the battery cap for that 18650. Uh, you know, Hans and I have just harped on this show uh, manufacturers we love 18650s that are removable i mean that is a mm -hmm. huge huge deal i'll be honest with you you take a small compact scope uh it's sometimes hard to get that battery where it's removable mm -hmm. just like this you know what let's be honest about it this battery cap sticking up that's not the best looking in the world but you know what you're out here hunting hawks and coyotes and you want a removable battery you don't care what it looks like you, how else would you do it there's not a better way so i'm just making a point there's a trade-off i had a guy that that pointed out to me he's like man i don't know just looks like there's like some pill bottle sticking up off the top and i'm like well the other alternative would to be a put an 18650 in there that you can't take out mm -hmm. i mean it's right. well what do you do you you, you gotta you, you gotta have a way to do it right. so uh, i really like that um, again, simple unit. There it is. Again, small, lightweight. I mean, if you look, I'm going to try to hold them both up at one time. This is probably going to be a disaster. Uh, but yeah, this is a disaster. This is not going to work. You can see that that these units, I can't see myself, so I don't know what's in the screen. They're, they're basically the the same size hmm. that just has the laser range finder up on yep. the top. So there you go. All right, and the last one of the scopes that we're going to talk about today, the brand new AGM adders. These things were just released just a couple of weeks ago. I've uh, created a lot of buzz. People have anticipated them forever, and Jason, you and I have already sold a pile of them uh, yes, in, in, in a short amount of time. So, again, four different models of the adders. Two of them are 384 resolution. Two of them are 640 resolution. The two 384 resolution models, those are 12 micron units. Uh, the TS35 384, uh, that is a three power base magnification. And all these scopes, y'all, they are eight times digital zoom. So just so you know, right. uh, whatever the base magnification, it, they all do have eight times digital zoom magnification. So uh, the TS35 384, three power base magnification the price on that's 24.95 so right there in that same price same exact price as the rattler ts35 uh the uh, ts50 384 that's a four power base magnification price on that 29.95 uh, then you have the two 640 models those are 640 by 512 uh, 512 resolution 12 micron the ts35 640 that's a two power base magnification at thirty nine ninety five, and then you get the TS fifty six forty, which is a two and a half power base magnification. Price on that's forty four ninety five, so just under forty five hundred dollars. Uh, all of these, all four of these models, whichever one you you choose to get, uh, does come with the American Defense Manufacturing Recon thirty millimeter mount. Uh, it also has video and audio recording. It's the only one of the the scopes that we're talking about today that records audio. Uh, it does have Wi Fi. Uh, and an internal rechargeable battery. Uh, the battery life on that is uh, 15 plus hours on the internal batteries. And then it does have an option for a removable, uh, just a regular CR123 battery. That's only going to get you about an hour to hour and a half on that spare battery that you can remove uh, on top of the unit. So those are the four different adders. And that's the last of the scopes that we're going to be talking about today. Okay, I'm going to try to hold this thing up. It's not easy because 
Uh, it's it's long, especially with this eye cup on here, and I'm up close to my camera. Uh, so this is it. Uh, this is the adder. As obvious, you can tell it is a 30 millimeter tube, traditional daytime scope design. I want to point something out. Hans mentioned, but I think it's getting glossed over uh, easily by by us and by a lot of people, uh, even by uh, you know AGM. This unit, every adder, comes with and an American Defense Manufacturing mm -hmm. Recon mount. That is a $200 mount, the exact mount that we sell on our website, uh, that we sell for all the other brands, all the other optics that take uh, you know, a 30 millimeter tube. And I mean, these are fantastic high-end American Defense mounts. I mean, just as good as these small little quick detach mounts on the Rattlers and the Varmints, uh, but it is a $200 mount that they are throwing in for free. So that makes these scopes even a better value. So, all right, I'm banging everything around, moving my mm -hmm. mic. Uh, this is the scope, basically. Uh, what you can see right here, uh, it's, again, this is going to be on the left. So this, you know, if that concerns you, it's something to consider. This is going to be basically how you get into your menu and your scroll wheel here, uh, do some of the functions. But... Uh, for your normal, most of what you're going to be doing in a night, those functions are back here on the back. You can kind of see it on my video here, mm -hmm. these buttons. That's where you record your video. Uh, that's where you power it on, um, you know, all, all that sort of thing. So that's, that's back here on it. Very easy to use as well. If you're looking for something uh, in a 30 millimeter tube design, uh, that's what I would suggest. Battery life is phenomenal. Now, Let's roll right on into this. Uh, we'll come back. I, there's some things I want to say, but I don't want to get them out of order. So let's talk real quick, Hans. Let's just start mm -hmm. back at the beginning and go with the Rattlers. Right. All right. So here we go. I mean, I'm just going to hold it up here while we're talking. The Rattler. Um, what are the pros mm -hmm. to this unit? Maybe what are the cons? I mean, yeah. what, 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 what do we like? What, what, you know, why is this? What's good about this scope? Yeah, and I'll just kind of give customers experiences and in, in, in my own use. Uh, to answer this. So I would say quickly, without giving this too much of thought, uh, I would say the pros of the Rattler, um, first of all, very good picture image. I would say that the the size of that unit um, makes it uh, something that could be used and have dual purpose. A lot of people that purchase that also want to use it as a monocular and a, as a backup or buddy scope. So I think size, picture image, uh, obviously the fact that it does come with the American defense manufacturing mount. Uh, and I think that the, uh, the lower base magnification on those units mm -hmm. are a positive, just like I think the higher magnification on the adders, uh, are going to be a positive. So, um, that does fit, uh, you know, the one and a half power TS 25, the, the 2.2 power TS 35, are really geared towards very specific hunters or or people that are using it for primarily, um, you know, stuff that's going to be under 150 yards uh, or in you know very some somewhat short range stuff to very short range stuff. But I would say those are the positives. I don't think I missed anything. Video recording. Um, uh, I would say the cons, and I'll run through those real quick. Um, one. Uh, I prefer scopes that have rechargeable batteries. I don't like messing with batteries or battery packs. So the fact that it does run on CR123 batteries, which isn't uncommon for a lot of scopes in that price range. But um, I would say that's a negative. And maybe the only other con, um, it, well, I don't know. It's not really, the, the menu's not really a, a con. <laughs> we, you know, these things have been around for a long no, time. People, I, I think the menu's simple. Yeah, I mean, it, it's simple. I, I know what you're saying. Sometimes you don't there's, know what the symbols mean yeah, in there, there's but some, they're manual. Uh, we get calls. You look at it, it explains it. Yeah, you definitely got to read the menu. There's the, some of these, sometimes guys get confused on citing these things in because there's a, a menu item yeah. that says trajectory and they think, oh, well, that's the zeroing function. Well, it's actually in the reticle where you choose your reticle. So and we get yeah, a lot of there, calls. There's a little confusion yeah, we get a little, in some, a lot, of some calls about that. But other than that, no. I mean, really, the only con I would say is the battery setup. Um, you know, that's the only thing I could say would be okay. a con. So, so I'm going to agree with everything you said. think that the one thing to remember, this lower magnification gives you a wider field of view. So I like that. I mean, for, for what I'm doing, close range hog hunting, um, I like the lower magnification, the wider field of view. Mm -hmm. um, I, I agree with 
with all those comments. I think value for the dollar, small, lightweight, hand holdable if you need it, whatever, great value. Now, I'm going to move on mm -hmm. quickly here, and I'm going to grab this uh, varmint. I'll hold it up again real quick so you remember which one this is. This is the laser rangefinder model. I would say the pros on this are easy. It's got a laser rangefinder. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got an 18650 battery. Uh, I also, this is a 12 micron unit. Mm -hmm. um, it actually, it's, so it's a different sensor, uh, thermal sensor than what's over here in these ad, oh, not adders, uh, rattlers. So it has a little better image quality. So when you upgrade and you get uh, the, the uh, boy, these names, the varmint, when you get the varmint uh, instead of the rattler, you are getting the removable rechargeable battery, the laser range finder, um, more magnification mm -hmm. and a better image. Mm -hmm. You're, you're paying for that, but you're getting that. And so I think at the, you know, the prices here on these, uh, varmints of 30, I'm going to round up here, $3,300 and $3,800 for these two models. It's very, mm -hmm. uh, very good value for the dollar. Um, I, I think we can maybe get into a minute. When we start talking about the adders. I don't think that if you if you don't need the laser range finder, I don't know that it's it's that great of a deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you're you're paying for that. So if you don't need that, probably not a big deal. Also, I would never upgrade to one of these scopes uh, just because you say, well, you guys said it's got a little better image quality. Well, it does, but it's a three power and a four power right. base mag. That's going to narrow your field of view. That's going to be better for, for guys that are doing a, a lot of longer range shooting. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Three power is not crazy high. Right. That might work for you. Uh, but you just, you, you need to, if, if you don't know for 100%, you probably need to give us a call. Make sure yeah. you know what magnification is right. That is one thing I know is very confusing for people when they're starting out is uh, they oftentimes think they need more magnification mm -hmm. than they do. Mm -hmm. And then they find out they got a little narrow field of view. Right. So anyway, I'm rambling. Yeah. Uh, that I think that's the pros, the cons to this unit. Um, I'll be honest. I mean, I don't know what, what the, the, the cons I mean again, other than maybe just the, the price cost more. I mean, I compare when I'm saying cons, I'm mm -hmm. saying compared to mm -hmm. the rattle or, or that, or I, I don't really think that there's going to be any cons now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say one quick thing as we move out of these and, and Hans jumps on the adders. Th this is, I guess, a con for, for both the varmint and the rattler. These optics work best on rifles with a collapsible stock. So AR-15, AR-10 style rifles, that is what you're going to want to use them on. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's impossible to use them on a bolt action rifle, but it's most likely if you've got a fixed stock, it's going to be hard to get that eye relief you need mm -hmm. and it's probably not going to work. And that's a perfect segue to go into the adder. Right. I think now, whether you're an AR 15 shooter or a, a bolt gun or fixed stock, you know, shooter, the adder will, will, will cross both of those. Yeah. So the adder, I would say the, the pros to that, like you said, uh, the flexibility of mounting AR or bolt action rifle, which is what those, the tube style scopes are, are designed for. Um, it, right now, it, these scopes, uh, again, are for sp very specific hunters, the three power of, of the 384 resolution range, the three power and the four power, uh, base modification units. Those are, uh, you know, primarily what we think of for guys that are taking longer shots, uh, coyote hunters, hog hunters that are taking longer shots. But these are these optics right now uh, are the highest magnification units that you can get under $3,000. So before, if you wanted, uh, you know, something with four power magnification, you were going to have to jump up to, you know, almost $4,000. Uh, so you're getting, um, you know, if you are, trying to stick to a budget with most people are, and a lot of people try to stick to that under $3,000 budget, but you're a coyote hunter up North and you're taking 200 yard shots all the time. Uh, now you have an option. So you don't have to settle for a scope just because it fits your budget. Um, you can pick a, the right scope like the adder that's going to fit uh, you, what, you know, the type of hunting you're doing. So um, higher magnification, 
for this case is a positive. I would say obviously the price, uh, you know, them being able to keep the two 384 resolution models under uh, uh, under 4,000, the, the, the 640 unit models, you know, those are under 5,000, which is good. You're getting video and audio recording. It's the only one of the models in the AGM line that has audio recording. Uh, and the battery life, man, the battery life is, and we, when we did our review, and if you want to check out the full review of the ad, or we did that a couple of weeks ago, but 15 plus hour runtime on the rechargeable internal batteries, uh, th it's the best by far that in of anything we've tested as far as battery life. So, um, <clears throat> for sure, you know, that all with the fact that these are really good picture qualities, the 384s, um, for $2,500 and for $3,000 for both of those uh, 384 resolution models, that is one heck of a deal with everything you get. And that's why they've sold so well in such a short amount of time with the, the, the American defense mount with video and audio recording with the long battery life uh, with the, the higher magnification with the ability to mount it on AR um, and bolt action rifles, especially those 384 resolution models are going to sell like crazy. They, it's going to be their, I think it's going to be their new most popular, uh, uh, optic thermal optic. Yep. hundred percent agree. I tell you, uh, they are fantastic. I want to make the same caveat though on this unit, um, because this is, you know, the $2,500 adder is the exact same price uh, obviously as the $2,500 mm -hmm. rattler. And so there's this immediate, oh, well, I'm just going to get this because you said it's got a better image quality and it's got better battery life. And that is true. But you need to make sure that you can stand three power for what you're doing. And you may very well be able to do that. But it, there are, again, it's why we're doing this show, there's pros mm -hmm. and cons to each. And I, I can tell you personally, and I know Hans is going to agree with this, if you're shooting very close range, I mean, under 100 yards all the time, or, or most of the time, you know, hog hunting, you, you're not taking a lot of those 100, 150, 200 yard shots. I would give up a little bit of the image quality mm -hmm. and buy the Rattler for the exact same price as I would buy the Adder because it fits mm -hmm. what I need right. to do. I mean, I literally see this as a tool and it's buying the right uh -huh. tool for the job. Just because this tool over here has got a couple cool features that you like, mm -hmm. you, you don't want to buy the wrong tool for the job. So I just I want, I want to point that out. And so I think that kind of moves into who are these optics better suited for? And I'm just going to quickly run run down this. And again, we're talking about the 384s a lot here. Okay, guys. I mean, we, with the 640s, um, obviously, those are a little easier because they all have the basic same magnification. They're two power yeah. and they're two and a half power. And, and this is something else we should point out. The 640 Rattler, Adder, and Varmint all have the same basic image quality. Mm -hmm. OK, I mean, it's the same sensor, same unit. So you should expect the same in those. I think it's very easy. Which style do you like? And, you know, if you do I need a laser range finder? Yes. Choice is made. Do I not need one? OK, now I'm down to two. What am I going to do? I'm going to put on a bolt gun. Uh, yes, you got your choice made. No. Well, I can use either one of them. Which one do I like? Do I like this? You know, am I going to pull it off and hold it in my hand? Okay, I may use the rattler. So anyway, I just want to make that clear that, <clears throat> excuse me, that I think that the 640s, to me, I can talk to somebody on the phone with a process of elimination really quick and get you into those. Mm -hmm. Because again, magnification, image quality stays exactly the same uh, across all of them. Um, so with, with that said, and I'm going to run this down and, and Hans, you know, I think we kind of already, already said this, but I'm just going to say it again. Uh, I think bolt action shooters, you need to be looking at this, this varmint. I'm like, dad, go this adder. I'm sorry, this adder. And so, so look at that. That's where I think you need to be looking unless you've got, you know, some sort of chassis gun, a collapsible stock, mm -hmm. you know, or I'd, I'd go to the adder. 
AR-15 shooters, uh, uh, AR-10 shooters, you can still look at the adder. That's what we're, you know, we're running ARs and we're, you know, we love the adder. Mm, so yeah. nothing, nothing wrong with, with right. doing that at all. Um, I think that's really going to come down to the design you like. I think it's going to come down to you like that really, really long battery life. And in the 384s, I think it's going to be a lot of coyote hunters, as, as Han said. Maybe even hog hunters just shooting on bigger fields. I literally just talked to a guy who's in Mississippi. He said he's hunting on big ag fields that can be a mile long. And he said, you know, we can see thousands of yards. He's like, we're not shooting that far, obviously, but we're hunting hogs. But he goes, we may look out there at literally a half a mile or more. Yeah and want to go hey there's some hogs out there we need to go spot and stalk and he said on these big fields we can't always get super close mm -hmm. and so you know you may be a hog hunter and still need three or even four power yeah. depending on your terrain and how you're hunting so again i think the varmint obviously that's going to be for for the guys that that need that laser range finder mm -hmm. um you know I, I think about that a minute He's hunting on these great big ag farm fields, plowed ground with no trees. <laughs> um, you got to know how far those animals are. And when you've got nothing out there to give you any depth perception, even if he's wanting to stay within that, you know, 100 or 200 or 250 yards, you get out there looking a mile with no trees. <laughs> it uh, can be right. really deceiving mm -hmm. on how far those, those, you know, hogs or coyotes are. So that may be something for there. I still think that the rattler uh, is the old standby. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just think it's such a value. People like this small, compact design. A lot of guys are not going to be able to afford to buy a handheld as well, or just, just maybe they can afford it, but just you know, really can't justify spending that money. I think this gives you the best of both worlds. Maybe you're going to go out and you just ride around on the side-by-side -side one night and look around. You're not even hunting. You got that. Maybe you're going to take it deer hunting and look for a dead deer. I think, you know, the Rattler still has a lot of value. I agree with that as well. So, you know, with the, um, just to add a couple more thoughts with the, with the adder and the introduction of that, I, I think, again, let's not, don't get drunk on features <laughs> uh, because, yeah. again, you can do that very quickly if that's not the right scope for you. You know, if you're taking... 50 yard shots all day long and that's all you do you definitely don't want an adder but i think you know the flexibility with the rattler like you said the ability to um use it as a backup scope use it as a monocular that's that's where the attractiveness uh has been this whole time and that's where it will remain uh but with a lot of guys call and ask about the varmint you know do i need a laser rangefinder and, and we can talk through that but this the the varmint right now the 384 varmints um those are the least expensive thermal optics that you can get with a laser range finder right now. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, recording this right now in, in August 22. Um, but it is, uh, and it, although it is the least expensive, um, it's a great optic with a great picture image and a great functionality and, and battery setup and system. <clears throat> so yeah, each one of these scopes, uh, go ahead. I, I'm sorry, I'm interrupt you. I just want to say one thing. We're focusing hard on the 384s. And I keep, I hear you doing it. I hear me doing it. And, and now that I've, I'm conscious of it, yeah. I don't want to think, you guys think we're dismissing these 640s because we're not. I mean, Han just made mm -hmm. the comment that if you're, if you're shooting, you know, short range, then you don't want an adder. He's talking about the 384. Right. Again, I'm kind of going back to that. The 640, two and two and a half power, that's going to be great for short range. It's also going to be great for medium range because they're 640. You're going to have that ability to zoom that that uh, TS50 640 on any of these models yeah. from two and a half up to five yeah. and still have a good 320 resolution usable unit. So I just don't want you to think we're dismissing them. But like I, I just said a few minutes ago, it's there's less confusion on the 640s than the 384s right. since they're uniform in magnification right. and image quality. Yeah. The 640s are still fantastic optics, yeah. and at the price point, you need to be looking at them. Um, I think especially, uh, you know, considering the battery life on the adder, mm -hmm. again, as, as Hans said, the laser rangefinder. So anyway, I, I just wanted to make a point. Some of the things we're just saying 
we're speaking to the 384s because that's really where the most confusion yeah. is. So I, I don't want you to think we're dismissing the 640s because yep. we're not. But I think the the decision, although doesn't seem very clear, it kind of is. You know, if you shoot a bolt action, an AR style rifle, look at the adders. If you want a laser rangefinder, look at the varmints. If you want something small, compact, uh, that you can really do anything with, look at the rattlers. I know it's not that cut and dry, but give us a call. If you are interested in an AGM product, trying to sort all this out. And if we just made it even worse for you, there's a lot of people that call <laughs> and a lot of people that call and said, I watched your show and I'm even more confused now than I was before. Well, <laughs> I get that. Uh, we did that on purpose because we want you to call us. Now, uh, you, That's a lie. No, That's a <laughs> you can call us 877-350-1818. Find everything on the website, OutdoorLegacyGear.com. If you are wanting to see more uh, episodes of the Late Night Vision Show, go check out our website, TheLateNightVisionShow.com. Got all of our past episodes. And uh, go subscribe on YouTube. Uh, go give us a follow on uh, any of the audio only uh, podcast apps, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, uh, any of the others that I might have missed, go check those out. Um, you can Hans, I'm going to butt in on uh, you. I'm going to butt in. I'm going to finish your sentence for you. There's one thing. I hope people are still with us. I had this on my notes and I didn't mention it before, but uh, it, it is something we sometimes forget to mention. All of these units are 308 recoil rated. So across the board, 308 recoil. I just wanted to, to at the very yeah. <laughs> end before we close, that is, mention that, we almost, that. That is important. So uh, you can find the Late Night Vision Show on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, you can also find Outdoor Legacy. You can find Jason over on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. And you can find me on YouTube and Instagram at Hans ETX. Uh, go all give us, hey, we love getting follows. We love uh uh, interacting with y'all on social media. So, uh, and we love seeing the pictures. If you, uh, are a customer of outdoor legacy, tag us on the social medias and, and, uh, we'll be sharing some of that as well. So, um, I think, uh, did we, is there any other, you did not, the, you did not tell them how to find you guys. If you're looking for reviews, I said uh, you did. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. I'm going to say it again. It's it's worth twice, okay? Go over to YouTube, H-A-N-S-E-T-X, or Instagram. Uh, you can go find him posting short video clips and, and pictures and stuff there. But I'm telling you, his YouTube channel is where it's really at. Uh, great videos, uh, great reviews of these scopes. He does some some different types of videos, walkout videos and things to show you, you know, what uh, somebody, you know, looks like standing out there and compares a lot of the scopes. So anyway, go check that out as well. Um, all right, Hans, we've walked all over each other in, in, <laughs> at, the, at the end here, but anything else we left out or need to tell them? Uh, n yeah, just keep watching. <laughs> we've got more episodes coming. <laughs> we've got, uh, we've That's got right. our board. Uh, we've got more reviews. We've got, we still have scopes that have not been released that we've been holding back on that we want to talk about. <sighs> no, uh, no, I know. I want to do it so yeah, bad. We got a couple, we got a couple IRA things coming. We got some Pulsar stuff coming. We, we got it all right here. Y'all the late night vision show. All right. Uh, keep stay tuned. You heard it. All right, guys. Hope to see y'all next week between now and then y'all stay safe in the fields and keep making those bacon pancakes. <laughs> <laughs>